today what we're doing is how to fix tight pecs and anybody who's done a lot of bench pressing push-ups in their day like me you're probably going to benefit from what we have here today tight pecs can also contribute to rounding of the shoulders because the muscle is here and here and if it's super strong and tight it's simply going to pull you forward it's just physics biomechanics is just physics applied to bones and muscles. So we're going to fix that up and we're going to take a systematic approach here. We're doing the wall pec stretch. So static stretching, you know, I talk about it a little bit in terms of it's not something that is going to give you long-term mobility gains because it's passive modality. You're not going to gain strength by doing something passive, by not engaging and firing the muscles. So if you want mobility, which is your ability to enter a range, be stable in that range and exit a range, you need active, act, you need activity at the joint at that range. So static stretching is not all bad, and we're going to do it today to simply relax tension in these muscles, and because they they're often just held tight, there there's some neural inputs to those muscles that never really goes right down. So we're going to shut that off. Then we're going to get into the prone horizontal shoulder extension. This is the longest exercise name in the world. Prone shoulder, hor prone horizontal shoulder extension level two ERE, end range expansion cycle. So it's level two. Basically means we're going to add some rotation at the end range, which has us also contracting for a longer period of time at the end range. So we're developing endurance and greater stability. Then we're going to go to the supine external rotation, internal rotation, ratcheting. So if you were here for the first live that we did about three weeks ago, then you learned the ERIR ratcheting technique. And it's a, a type of dissociation technique where you do a, a movement at the shoulder and then you do the typically, or the opposing movement. So there's when we round the shoulders or internally rotate the shoulders, the spine naturally just wants to flex. The scapula naturally want to protract. So what we're doing is we're internally rotating the shoulders and then we're retracting, depressing the scapula, extending the spine. So all we're going to do is we're going to do that in the supine position and you're going to see something really interesting here. Then we're going to go and integrate the range that we've gained with wall slides, and extended shoulder circles, two favorites. First up, the wall pack stretch. Very simple, get a wall. If you're a little too tall, this one's just actually perfect for me. Arm up on the wall, you can do this with me. We're gonna go for 60 seconds, because they're just because there's a lot of cues. I'm not gonna time myself, but that's what we're gonna do. So elbow just above the shoulder. Show you here. Elbow is just above the shoulder. Start square where you're not stretching at all. So no stretch and then start to turn into it until you start to feel just a, just a little stretch. Most people when they do static stretches, they reef into it and they go too far, too quickly. Just go easy. Now we're going to think about the other cues. So getting tall through the spine, I'm breathing, 360 breathing, so expanding the chest in all directions, out, sideways, back. Move the neck around a little bit, loosen up. Now think of engaging just a little bit through the abs to keep the rib cage down, so keep it from flaring down. Now I'm trying to open up this chest, so rotate away from the wall, externally rotate the shoulder, Retract the scapula on the right side, or my right side. I don't know what side you're doing. And let's go for three deep breaths. Three slow 360 breaths. One. Two. Three. And then when you come out of it, come out of it easy. Don't just flop, but come out with composure, with control. Let's move that around a little bit. Other side, I have no idea how long that was, but that was enough. 
get away from the timing and just get into the quality of it so much. So 60 seconds, could be 90 seconds, who knows. So I've got to, I start with a little stretch, get into it, now get tall. Put your focus on your posture. Now think of pulling the rib cage down a little bit by activating the abs here. Keeping strong through the glutes, through the floor. So I'm not just being twisted into my passive tissues through the hips. Slow 360 breaths. Kind of relax. Let go of the tension here. Move the neck around a little bit. Just slow and easy. And then open up, retract the scapula a bit, externally rotate the shoulder. Keep the alignment, keep the tension through the lower body activity. Reach the hand back. One more breath. Abs are on, staying tall, come out of it with control. Okay, prone horizontal shoulder extension, level two ERE. We're gonna get down to the ground now. So we're gonna do two cycles here. So I'll show you this. Now I'm gonna show you, we're gonna do one, one arm at a time for the first rep. We'll do right side together, left side together, just so it's easier for me to describe. And then we'll do both at the same time. And you can do either or for this one, it's fine. They're both beneficial in their own way. Move that Play-Doh out of the way. I want that ground into the carpet, kids. Okay, so I'm prone. Face down. Horizontal shoulder extension. So that movement here, horizontal extension is, and I'm doing right side only now, is this. That's horizontal shoulder extension. Moving my arm in this plane. If I were to be, just to show you sitting up, it would be this movement. Horizontal extension, horizontal flexion, also known as horizontal abduction, taking it away from the body. Horizontal adduction, taking it towards the body. So that's just the terminology there. Ready? Get alignment of the shoulder joint. So it's not popped up here. That's naturally what it might want to do because of tight pecs. Okay, we're going to work the muscles that get us deeper into the range and stretch the pecs actively. So keep the body tight. Lift up. Try not to move the body. Keep the head of the humerus down and in the socket. Lift it up as high as you can. Activate, breathe now. Okay, before lowering down, it's gonna raise up. Rotate a bit away from that arm. Pull it down into the socket. Keep alignment. Press into the floor. With the arm. fist is going into the floor. Go back down. Lift it up. Thumb up, rotate, keep engaged. Head of the humor centrated in the joint. Slow breath. Internal rotation, pure internal rotation. If you've been here the last two weeks, we've been working on that centration. Okay, and one more neutral, and then focus on lifting up. Get it high down under control. Okay, so that's one side. Level two ERE, getting more prone shoulder extension. Again, shoulder extension is like that. We're getting more of that. Think about it, we're working back here, doing different things, pressing, getting further into it, and rotating our body, so we're exiting it, rotating, which helps create stability, and then we're spending time there actively. Okay, we're gonna breathe. Big one, relax down, arm out, lift up, get nice and high, and hold. One slow breath, here we go. Get the scapula down and back. Okay, come up, then pressing, so exiting at the end range there, activating the pecs here. Still keeping that alignment of the shoulder. Okay, come back down, lift up, and think of thumb up rotation. So I'm still actively rotating, still pulling in, 
Still retracting the scapula. Lifting the hand up high. Breathe. And one more down. Internal rotation. Don't move the body. Keep that fist strong. Humerus pulled in to the socket. And one more neutral. Up. Oh, didn't breathe there. Breathe. Lift up high. And down under control. Okay. Both sides. So hopefully you're not sketched out because your face is on the floor, I know. Well, if you got a dirty floor, then yeah, I would be sketched out too. But if your floor is relatively clean, if not, I don't know. Take your shirt off. You should be at home. Uh, anyway, so it doesn't matter. Take your shirt off and throw it down. Okay, I don't really care. This mat's clean enough. Okay. Arms out. Pull the shoulders down a bit. So retract the scapula. Depress the scapula. And then up. Fists. Nice and strong. Lift up high. Don't shrug here. Keep the scapula depressed. Lift up as high as you can. Reach hard. As high as you can. Now breathe. Okay, now this one is tough. So what we're going to do is just put it down and press. Get lengthened and press. Activate the pecs, keep the shoulders down. You can't work at pure end range, but that's fine. But if you see if I had yoga blocks, we could, or foam rollers. Okay, now we're gonna lift that up again, off the floor, and thumbs up, it's external rotation. Activate all those muscles between the scapula. One slow breath. And then internal rotation, keep up high, keep the scapula down, breathe, and neutral, one more, raise up far off the ground as you can, try and keep the neck muscles kind of relaxed, and then down under control. What this is doing again, this is one of my end range expansion techniques, so every course that I have released has these. Control series, hip flexibility solution, shoulder flexibility, all, all my courses have them. In the earlier days when I released the shoulder and the hip flexibility solution, you know, that was like, I think six years ago, possibly, seven years ago. It's been a while. I didn't know as much as I know now. So those courses, they're useful, beneficial, but I've refined what I've done, been doing since then. And hence you see now we have level two ERE techniques. They're very specific, and you can take this concept of enter the range, make sure you're in ABCs of precision movement, alignment, breathing, control. If you remember those things, you'll know the fundamental basics applied to every technique that I teach when I'm doing this kind of trying to improve mobility, movement, that kind of thing. So apply that everywhere. But this, we're activating in that end range. We're telling not just, well, we're telling the brain that we can work in this range. We can enter there, we can stabilize there, hang out, move around, and we can exit all under our own control. So give me that range and let me keep it and go away. Okay, that's what you're telling your brain. Next up, supine ER, IR ratcheting. So this one, yeah, actually this angle will be perfect. Angle to angle. Supine ER, IR ratcheting. So if you haven't been to the first live, week one, um, when I showed up really late because we had tech issues uh, that first session, then you might not have seen this. Supine ER IR ratcheting. First, we're just going to do some internal external rotation. So I'll give you the side view first. In this position, get a little bit of scapular retraction, a little bit of shoulder blades down and back. So the chest is out, but not too much. Not so much that the lumbar spine is really kicking into it. Lumbar spine should be relaxed. It's just pure Shoulder blades down and back, okay? You can breathe. We're just gonna go external rotation. Activate. So even though I'm not moving anymore, I'm still activating in that direction. And then internal rotation. Think of keeping that humerus down low to the ground, not popping up there. A lot of people will make that error. Keep the humerus down 
forearm down low to the ground so the tricep is just kind of resting down there elbows down on the ground fist is down on the ground you'll feel some stretch through the bicep there probably as well you might get some nerve stretching don't go too far okay we'll go external rotation got to stretch the nerves but you don't want to do it too aggressively and then internal rotation think of the bicep moving not just the fists i can do a fist movement without actual shoulder movement so the bicep staying still okay rotate the bicep up for external rotation rotate the bicep down for internal rotation keeping the scapular position fixed okay shake it out for a sec shake it out now we're gonna do the ratcheting. So this is one of my dissociation techniques, which is great for breaking old habitual movement patterns and great for activating muscles at their end ranges. So we gain that strength and control at the end range. So arms are out. So I'm gonna start, thumbs up, pull the shoulder blades down and back a little bit, strong fists. I'm able to breathe, my lumbar spine's not super activated, it's relaxed. I'm gonna go external rotation, think of pointing the biceps up towards my ears in that direction. Now keep activating there, hold that. Hold that activation of the shoulders, bring the chin to the chest, flex through the cervical and thoracic spine. Okay. Keep rotating, externally rotating the shoulders. And then down, internal rotation, so there we're breaking that movement pattern. And here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna think of extending the spine so I'm arching my back, keep internally rotating, keep pressing down into the floor now, start pressing down into the floor. Arch the spine so I'm making like a bridge. And then relax. You might feel some, even some cramping at the end range there. I don't anymore because I've done a lot of these Types of things, so I'm used to it. And we're gonna externally rotate. Keep pressing the hands into the floor now as I'm externally rotating. And then that activation, flex the spine. Keep externally rotating. Keep pressing, don't move the arms. So dissociating this common pattern, I'll explain again. We're gonna do one more internal rotation Maximize that internal rotation. Keep the shoulder blades down and back so you're not impinging. And then extension, you can even look back behind you a bit. Create that arch in your spine. Shoulders down, scapula down and back now. Internal rotation, and then come out of it relaxed, under control, don't flop out of it. Okay, so that's a little supine ratcheting there. So the principle there, and if you have any questions, comments, please, now's a good time. The principle there is typically when we externally rotate our shoulders, especially when our arms are out like this, out in abducted 90, typically we'll want to pull the shoulder blades down and back, kind of arch the spine up. So extend the spine. Let's be more precise here. It's late. My stomach is full of rice. And then internal rotation, just do it and just let your body go with it. We just want to round forward, thoracic kyphosis, flex the thoracic spine, not kyphosis. That's just the natural movement pattern. So what we did on the ground there is internal rotation, then we created that arch. So we can break that pattern there. Then external rotation, and then we flex. And that, if you can picture, when I'm flexing, this is trying to pull my arm this way. So by me holding that position, I'm eccentrically lengthening that muscle because I'm getting more of that range. I'm actually moving away and I'm holding that. So I'm getting greater strength built up through that eccentric contract or greater force is present through that muscle when I'm doing that, as long as I'm able to maintain that position. Okay, so that's a Feel it now. Just feel that. I do this stuff if I'm... I don't do it as often as I'd like, but hitting the heavy, heavy bags and boxing, I do these types of moves before and my shoulders feel fast, they feel loose, and they feel stable, strong and stable. When I hit the bag, there's no 
kind of pin or impingy going on, impingy things going on. It's just solid, fast, loose, mobile. It's great. Okay, so that is that supine ER IR ratchet. So now, and this is in the description. I'm going to change the angle of the phone, but just give you this. Or number four wall slides. We'll do eight. So if you don't have enough room, like me, then you can just squat down. Get a little wall sit at the same time. It's a bonus, but I'm trying not to put too much weight. So now what we're going to do is we're going to integrate what we've just done. So we've gained some range. Now we're going to work it in a more complex pattern. So the shoulders are moving, scapula's moving, the elbows are moving. It's a dynamic movement. So we're going to integrate into this pattern. So here, I'm going to try and get the elbows as low as possible with at least the knuckles on the wall here. So that's external rotation of the shoulder, but don't hyperextend the spine to do this. Okay, I don't want to look like I'm giving birth here. Just, ah, that's funny. I can see myself in the camera doing that. Okay, so press against the wall a little bit and then keep the fists close to the body, not flared out here, as close as you can. It's fist, elbow, Shoulders touching, not hyperextending the spine. And we're gonna go up, try to keep everything touching. So I can go off, if I can go all the way up here and touch, then that's cool. But this position, especially squatting, is difficult for me now. And then down. So shoulder blades are down and back here. Fists are close. Sliding, trying to press into the wall. We're gonna do eight, that's two. Hopefully you have a wall somewhere. Three, breathe, not hyperextending the spine. Four, five, try and extend all the way, but this is hard. Six, there we go, we get a little more, two more. Nice and slow pace, seven, Starting to lose it there, get fatigued. Eight, okay, come off. All right, that was a bonus, bonus leg burn there. So here we're integrating. I like to do this after mobility work. So if I have just worked to gain range of motion, right away I like to do, don't have to do a crazy amount of sets, but one set, we just did eight reps here. This takes us through this range that we just gained of that horizontal extension, just elbows bent. Now I'm activating through this other, this whole range back here. So mobility strength, live workouts here on YouTube, Tuesday at 8 p.m., Friday at 1 p.m. Make sure you subscribe and hit notifications and you'll be notified of when they come up on YouTube. And if you want email reminders, then sign up for the Precision Movement newsletter list, okay? If you have difficulty with scapular work. So if you don't know how to move your scapula, you just have no kinesthetic awareness there. I suggest you check out scapstrength.course first. Go to precisionmovement.coach forward slash store and you'll see that course listed somewhere in there. If you need greater mobility, shoulder control, that's, that's the ticket. So you can find that at the store as well. Okay, so if you guys are gonna, anybody's gonna take off, thank you for coming. Um, I enjoy doing these, I enjoy seeing the comments, the questions and interacting and just knowing that uh, people who take this movement stuff seriously and want to move and be active, and just not just now and have their eye on the long term. Like, I appreciate that. And I'm, I'm glad we're, we're doing this together. All right, thanks for showing up and I hope to see you on Friday or next Tuesday. Okay, have yourselves a good night. Take care.